Uh, Gaddafi loyalists have retaken Bani Walid, as we've been reporting earlier in the programme tonight. How much support is there still for the former regime? And could they take more towns? We're hearing there is more trouble in towns. Where is this likely to go to, do you think? Well, the thing, we, the thing we, have, we have to remember about the Gaddafi regime, or any kind of regime, that it isn't simply about the people at the top. There are people, their supporters on the ground, lower levels, mid-level mid officials, and so on. And I think quite a few of them um, would have been uh, uh, thrown to the winds um, after the fall, after his death, and now are regrouping. And of course, they, they represent, to a certain extent, a section of the population that now uh, wants to find its voice. And what, we, what I think what happened in Bani Walid took everyone by surprise, but in a sense you can understand it because it's also a certain amount of regionalism, uh, a certain amount of tribalism. So, you know, the, the people, the, the NTC forces, when they walked into or marched into Bani Walid, would have had to have faced the local population. Now this local population seems to have thrown them out. And is this a sign of things to come for the NTC? Yes, very much, because this is one aspect of the story. And of course, last week, the, the, the center of the revolution itself, Benghazi, saw a very violent, well, quite a violent demonstration, about 2,000 people who stormed the offices of the NTC, who smashed, smashed up the computer equipment, uh, had a riot, because there is extreme unhappiness about what some people are describing as the hijacked revolution. That is, when the West intervened, it also took control of the process. And now people are saying, well, you know, this is not what we wanted. Where, is the re where are the reforms and so on? So there seems to be quite a lot of uh, unease and unhappiness uh, taking place in Libya at the moment. And could this uh, as well be some reaction to that uh, report last week that we saw Middle East human rights groups giving extensive evidence of war crimes carried out in Libya? They say by Allied forces during last year's war, this report um, instead of follow, this report saying instead of following the UN mandate to protect civilians, NATO bombed schools and private homes. Is this reaction to that some kickback as well? Do you think? Most definitely. I mean, it's a truism, but there's no such thing as a clean war, and civil wars are the most brutal affairs. And so you, and so you, you can imagine. Um, uh, NATO, well, I, you don't need to imagine it, NATO really pushed the envelope. I mean, they broke the resolution. They were there to defend civilians. That was the mandate. And they went, they essentially became the rebel, uh, the rebels' air force. And so they were attacking in the, the or, you know, almost total annihilation of CERT. Um, the, the, the attack on areas considered to be loyal to uh, the, the old regime and so on. And so I think there's, uh, it's no question that there are many, many people who died on the NATO bombs. Mm. If I can just say there was one incident very early on where the, the, the rebels themselves were pleading with NATO not to attack various bases around Tripoli because they were full of political prisoners. And many of those died as well. So it was, it was very messy very brutal, and I think there's quite a lot of acts of revenge taking place as well. And Simon, this report claiming the West got involved in the war to oust Gaddafi and, crucially, get hold of the oil. Well, if that's the case, how legitimate is the NTC anyway, if it's been installed by the West? But they, they, I know it seems a strange thing for, for, for me to say, but this wasn't primarily about oil. The, 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 they already had, Gaddafi had already concluded oil deals in 2003 when you know, he came in from the cold, uh, 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 and so on. This is, I think, much more significant than simply oil, if, if this can be said in, in honesty, which is there's an attempt, there was an attempt by NATO. NATO saw the opportunity to place themselves between two revolutions, the Egyptian and the Tunisian. And, of course, we have to remember uh, we're on the eve of the anniversary of the beginning of the Egyptian revolution, the speed in which, after the fall of Mubarak, these revolutions spread across the Arab world. And so... You know, the, the, the panic, I think, inside of, inside of the West, and globally, to be honest with you, about what was taking place inside the Middle East, here was an opportunity for them to hijack uh, the, this revolution, which they have managed to do. But the thing about revolutions is they're not simply passive events. There is a whole awakening of a population in the Middle East, but also in Libya. And people are saying, well, this is not what we had an uprising for. And the victims themselves, you know, the victims, the new victims, the old supporters of the old regime, saying, well, you're talking about democracy, where's our inclusion in this? Yeah. And so you, you get the sense there is this fracturing. The new electoral law is very, uh, how, how can I put it, uh, has made people very, very unhappy. It seems there is a, a reintroduction of tribalism and patronage networks and so on. And so, you know, uh, the, 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 there is a lot of disquiet in every uh, corner of Libya at the moment.
Simon Fro, we've got to leave it there, but thanks ever so much for your thoughts. Thanks for being on RT. Simon Assaf, activist and investigative journalist, they're joining us from London.